Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Catherine and today's video is going to be our last reseller recap of 2023. I know it's 2024, it's almost the end of January 2024, but we always recap the month prior and then because it was the end of the year, I figured we'd recap the whole year and just kind of see where I was at number wise with reselling. So if that is something you want to watch, then please stick around. Welcome, my name is Catherine and I am a beauty and reselling enthusiast. So those are the types of things that you will see on this channel. You can tell the reselling mess everywhere. <laughs> the beauty part is I have all of my uh, makeup that I'm currently wearing in my uh, January Shot My Stash, which I will link up in the corner for you. And then I am featuring, I went very nothing on the eyes today because I couldn't be, I couldn't be bothered to do an eye look. Um, but I wanted to do a little bit of pop, um, pun intended, on the lips. I am currently wearing the new Natasha Denona, trying to get it right, new T Natasha Denona um, Berry Pop Collection. I did do a swatching video, which I can link up in the corner for you. It does come with a um, trio of blushes and highlighter as well, but I'm wearing I'm wearing a different Natasha Denona <laughs> blush highlighter on my face today, the My Mini Dream Palette, which I also did a swatch video of that as well, so I can link that up in the corner too. Um, but let's get into the meat and potatoes of today's video, which is a reseller recap. Um, so every month I kind of come back on here, I tell you all the things, all the, the, the highs and the lows of each month when it comes to reselling, I just kind of dive more into the number pieces of everything, and I feel like I have an animal here potentially maybe not um so we are recapping December so for the month of December I like to give you kind of all my totals first and then we dive into the lowest and highest profits of everything um so for December my total sales so um basically everything combined together with cost of goods with profit with uh with all that stuff was basically you would call it my gross sales my gross sales and how I remember between gross and net I read somewhere that it's gross that you don't get to keep all of this number <laughs> so if that helps you let me know um but basically my gross sales was $1,567.55 which equates to about $50.57 per day my cost of goods was $479.01 and penny and then my total profit was $1,119.89, or that breaks down to about $36.13 per day. I feel like I do have a hair somewhere. Wait, it's there. I know it's there. Hold on. Apparently, I don't have a hair on my lips, but okay. Then the total number of items I sold was 50 items, um, 50 items total. I was about to say that breaks down to, let's see what that breaks down to. How many, we had 50 items divided by 31 days. So that breaks down to 1.6 item a day, which I am totally okay with. And then my average listing price per item was $41.18. My average cost of goods was on the higher side of $9.39. My average profit per item was $21.96, and then my average days to sell was 74 days, 74.5 days. Um, so I sell on a lot of different platforms as well. So I like to break down of each platform. Uh, so I sold nine items on eBay, four items on Mercari, two on Curtsy. Curtsy is kind of coming in a little bit for me. Um, what I love about Curtsy is that they automatically input from Poshmark. So basically all you have to do is list to Poshmark and then on Curtsy you can just basically it's like a little toggle switch that they will upload it from Poshmark to you but they only do women's items. So if you have any sort of men's items or kids items I believe those will not populate um, just your women's items but it's like a free cross-listing service basically for you which is pretty awesome. And then I saw too um, a few people in the reselling community were talking about how Curtsy has this like neat sort of returns program that works for the seller and the buyer. So it's like if the buyer um, 
opts to pay like a few more dollars, then they have the option of returning it. Then it gets returned to like a third party. So you as the buyer, or I'm sorry, you as the seller still gets the money um, if something gets returned and then the buyer obviously gets their money returned. The point that I'm unclear of if like what happens, <laughs> what happens to the middle of the, like in the middle, where does your item go? I can only imagine it goes to this third party and then they resell it for you. I don't know. I'd have to look more into it, but curtsy has been, it's, it's getting up there. Let's say I've made more sales on curtsy than I have on Facebook marketplace this whole year. That's how sad it is. Anyways, five, I said that weird, five items sold on Depop and then the rest, which is 30 on Poshmark. So as promised, diving into my lowest of the lows of profiting, so my lowest item that I profited on was this Dippin' Daisies banded bikini top. It did sell in Depop. My cost of goods was $5.29. It sold for $13 um, and I profited $4.29. It did um, sell within 118 days of the first time listing it. I did receive an offer and it was um, sold on a boosted... Uh, sale. So with Depop, you can have the option of boosting your listings. So basically, if it does sell on a boosted listing, then um, I think they take 8% of the sale price of it, which is why my profit was a little bit lower. Um, I boost all my listings on Depop and I boost all of them on eBay, but we will talk more about that in a bit. Oh, uh, let's see. My next item was this H&M Powder Beige Tool Midi Skirt. Um, all of this stuff too, I should say, um, has probably been featured in a thrift haul. So I will leave my thrift haul playlist up in the corner for you. Um, if you're ever interested to see what sorts of things that I picked up, pick up from thrift stores, garage sales, all that kind of stuff. Um, so the item was that H&M skirt. It did sell in Depop. My cost of goods was $6.38. It sold for $15.90. So my profit was $6.54. It did sell 52 days within the first time listing it. Um, and it sold by um, me sending an offer to the buyer. It was not a boosted uh, sale, but it was, I did notice that it was, excuse me, pretty popular item on Depop and Poshmark. Like I had a lot of likes on it, but it took 52 days to sale. Um, my next item was this A New Day, which is a Target brand cutout studded black ankle booty. It sold on Poshmark. My cost of goods was $6.50. Sold for 20 bucks. My profit was $9.50. It did take 211 days to sell, but it did sell within the first time listing it. And um, somebody had, I received that offer from the buyer. Then we move on to Mercari. I sold this Lulu's Babe Alert black noted strapless bodysuit. Sold for $6.39. I do believe it was new with tags as well. Um, so my cost of goods was $6.39. I did sell it for $20 and I profited $10.39. It sold 30 days within the first time listing it. Um, and I did receive an offer for that. And then my last of the lowest profits was this a uh, pair of Zara basic collection black mule sandal with this lucite heel. It was the largest size, I believe it was a size 11. Sold on Depop. My cost of goods was $5.61. Sold for $25. So I profited $11.25. It sold within 112 days of the first time listing it. And I did receive an offer by the buyer from, I'm, excuse me, from the buyer. And it was sold on a boosted listing. So I did have to pay that extra 8%. Uh, for it to be boosted. All right, so the exciting stuff is the high profits. Um, so my lowest highest profit was this Hill House the Ellie nap dress in this navy velvet. Um, I did unbox this in my boutique by the box haul, which I can list up in the corner for you if you're interested to see what other items um, that I received in that box. It did sell on Mercari. My cost of goods was quite high at $23.80. It sold for $79, which to be fair, I probably could have held out longer because it only took eight days to sell in the first time listing it. Um, but I'm at this moment of, I just want to move stuff. Like I don't, yes, I could get more, but how long is it going to take me to get more? I don't know. 
So it sold for $79 and I profited $44.13 and I did receive an offer from the buyer. The next item was this pair of Cole Haan men's original grand chukka two boots. Um, they sold on eBay. Cost of goods was $7.99. They sold for $60 plus shipping. Profit was $44.35. They took 105 days to sell in the first time listing. And I did receive an offer from the buyer and they were not promoted on eBay, which is to be honest, I sell most of my stuff on eBay through promotion. So that was kind of odd. Um, but I'll take it. That means I don't have to, uh, I don't have to pay that percentage price for the, for the sale, which is super nice. Um, the next item was this pair of Fry Madeline short ankle boots in Burgundy. They sold on Poshmark. My cost of goods was $20. I did pick these up at my local garage sale in my neighborhood. I've actually picked up three pairs of boots and they have all sold. Um, so my cost of goods was $20 per boot. They sold for $110. Um, I profited $68. They did sell 23 days in the first time listing them and I did receive an offer from the buyer. Then we have this Belle by Alicia Bell silk printed mini dress, sold on Poshmark, cost of goods was $7.05, sold for $100. Um, so that is a Bolo brand, uh, be on the lookout for brand because I had never heard of Belle by Alicia Bell. Um, so something for you to consider to, if, if you see it in, in the stores or has, you know, it's readily available for you, something to consider. Um, cause I profited $70 and 93 cents. It sold 28 days, um, within the first time listing it, it did sell from an offer sent by Posher VA. So it was a 20% offer that I automatically send out, um, excuse me on all of my items. Um, a minute after they like an item, Posher VA will send out a offer to them. I choose to do 20% and you have to do a discounted shipping. So I do like the $5.95 shipping, whatever, which may, basically means I have to pay an additional two, $2, $2, two cents, something like that. Um, but I always like to do it immediately. Usually the buyer is still on the app so they can like see it right then and there. Um, yeah, if you're ever interested in Posture VA, I do have my code down below. Um, I think you get to try them out for like two weeks free, which is definitely something to check out to see if it's worth it for you. And then I pay the annual fee, which I think is, I don't want to be, I don't want to misquote myself, but like 250 sounds like it could be about right. Might be a little higher, a little lower. I can't quite remember. Um, but there's tons of people, tons of people's codes that you can use. I would love it if you could use mine, but you don't have to, um, to get your, to get a discount for it. So that's what I suggest. And then moving on to my highest sale, which this one definitely helps push me over that thousand dollar, uh, limit, which I forgot to say in the beginning, I am a part-time reseller. Um, so I don't have like huge, huge, huge numbers. I'm a one person show, so I do everything myself. Uh, so I'm usually really happy with a thousand dollars profit each month. That money goes towards, um, student loans. It goes towards like savings and investments and vacations and stuff like that. Um, so a thousand dollars is, is doable for me. Um, so this one definitely helped push me over that thousand dollar limit. And this was the most, I, the highest cost of goods that I've had for quite some time. Um, it was a pair of Jimmy Choo Babette 100 crystal embellished velvet pumps. They are the most beautiful shoes I've ever seen. Um, they did sell on eBay. My cost of goods was $163 and five cents. Did pick these up at Plato's closet. Um, and I picked them up from the same Plato's closet that I bought the pair of Christian Dior shoes that sold for $700. I was kind of hoping for like a little repeat situation, which kind of not really, but I still, I still profited quite, quite a bit. So I, they sold for $350 plus shipping and my profit was $140 and 60 cents. They sold within 211 days of the first time listing them and 
they sold for um i received an offer from the buyer it was about half off um but luckily they were not promoted so i didn't have to pay that whatever percentage i had set it to so that was very nice okay i always like to go into like bundles and stuff like that so um my lowest bundle was two items it was this squat wolf newer bodysuit in gray kind of this like athleisure bodysuit and then um paired with another pair of athletic leggings from heroin sport marvel leggings which were new with tags my cost of goods was two dollars and 95 cents they sold for twenty dollars so i profited eight dollars five cents um this sale actually was my soft opening of the sale that i'm currently running in january and basically i just was really tired of having tons of items so i was liquidating a lot of my a lot of my um inventory and um if you head to my poshmark closet it'll explain everything but basically um most of the items in my closet will have a uh, a parentheses with a price in the title and that is like my liquidation lowest price um that it will be when you bundle it with something else so say for instance these both were ten dollars they had ten dollars in the title so when you bundle them together they were twenty dollars regardless of what the listing price was hopefully that's not super confusing if you head to my poshmark closet and click on uh this photo right here it will give you all of the information um but that i did a soft basically a soft opening of that sale i was getting everything prepped so i basically had to change all of my prices before um before i could like promote that sale so somebody basically just got an early deal um my highest bundle this was another athleisure bundle it was a pair of varley olive snake legging which varley was a new to me brand again it will be a list you'll have a few pairs you'll see what the tag looks like in my thrift hauls um an athletic racerback tank and an athletic crops both of which i'd had for a really long time so i'm glad to see them go there was an adidas romper and then a patagonia long sleeve like base layer tee my cost of goods for everything was $27.47. It sold for $100 because that was part of my two for 40 sale, which again, I will have my picture up here. It's not my current sale of what's going on. So maybe I won't have my picture. I don't know. I probably won't just because it's not my current sale. But basically, this is the ongoing sale I've had throughout the whole year, um, where if you purchase two items that are currently listed $99 and below, you can get them for $40 total. Um, so they sold for a hundred dollars. So basically that person picked out five qualifying items. So it came out to a hundred dollars. My profit was $52.53. So that was a great bundle deal. I did have one return in December and it was kind of funny. Um, so this just goes to show that people, people are very impulsive, impulsive when they buy. Um, so basically somebody made a, an offer and eBay automatically accepted it because I always put my ranges of offers basically. And so it got accepted, they paid, and then they immediately sent me a message saying, hey, can I return this? Because I didn't realize it had as much wear on it. And in all of my listings, you know, it says I do not accept returns. It's just a hassle I don't like to deal with. Um, and so, how it came out basically was like can i return this if it has more wear than i expected or than i saw and i just said yeah you can return it at your own expense like i am not paying for shipping fees or anything like that so if you feel like it's not up to your standards or what the pictures represent because I, I even told the buyer i was like hey all of my pictures are representative of the flaws they're noted in the pictures they're noted in the description i will not take a you know I'll, I'll take a return only if you pay for the return cost they agreed to that so basically they were asking to return it before i even shipped it um and so i sent it out they then requested a return so they returned it i've already resold that item to somebody else um at much lower price than what they bought it for but whatever i bought it at the bins so that's okay i was just glad to see it go and i got a five star rating from that other person <laughs> 
Um, so same day sales, I didn't have any this month, um, which typically I don't have like a, a huge ton of same day sales, but I did have 12 sales that were, that were within the same week of listing. So that's pretty cool. I did have two full price sales. Um, one of them was a pair of Nike joggers that sold on Poshmark. And the other one was a pair of J Crew tortoise printed ballet flats kind of had this like the plasticky tortoise um look they were really cute on um, those so sold on Macari and then I had five bundles that sold within my two for 40 sale which I was talking about earlier there was one bundle for the five items which was my highest bundle price excuse me um there was a three item bundle and then three two item bundles um, I did receive 21 offers, so basically the buyer sending me offers, and then I sent out 15, so offers that were sent and completed um, was 15 offers, six of them being from Pasha VA, so again, I always send off that 20% discount with uh, discounted shipping one minute after somebody liked it, and so six of those accepted offers were from Pasha VA. Again, code down below. <laughs> and then I like to kind of analyze my promoted versus not promoted or boosted if it's Depop. Um, so basically, I only promote my listings on eBay and I boost them on Depop. I know Poshmark has their own boosting, promoting type of uh, system. I did the free version. I didn't like it, so I opted not to pay for it because I do not like how they do it. Um, so I sold eight items that were either promoted or boosted on eBay and, Pop, uh, eBay and Depop, and then five of them actually sold that were not boosted or promoted, which is kind of cool. Um, I did recently change my promoted percentage on eBay. Used I used to just do what they recommended, but that recommendation has gone from like 8% to like 12%. So I was like, no, nah, I don't want to do that. So then I started just playing around if I just did promotions in the two to three percent or sorry two to five percent area and see where that lands me I might just kind of match on Depop next time because Depop just takes an eight percent fee no matter what on any item um so I might try that and see see what happens um so I always like to give myself some notes for December the notes that I gave myself was Depop was on fire at the end like I usually sell maybe two to four ish items um on depop throughout the year but i think i had like three depop sales in a row at the end um i will note they came in the lowest profits though three slots of the lowest profits were from depop that is okay i'm okay with that i'm okay with that um ebay has some of the highest profits again kind of a, a mixture of promoted and not promoted so still worth it to list on ebay even though i know it's a little bit of a hassle um a nice mixture of platforms too i'm always a huge proponent of cross list your items you're you're literally leaving money on the table if you do not cross list your items and i mean use me as a case example you can see on how many different platforms i sell on even though poshmark is probably always going to be the one that i sell the most on because i'm the most active on it um, but it also requires the most activity to be on it, um, to do well. So cross list your stuff. I have a Vendu link down below if you're interested in trying it out. Um, it is a cross listing service that I've used for a few years now. It's really awesome. They are continuously developing it all of the time and making improvements. Um, so something that I, I truly enjoy. So Posture V and Vendu are the two ones that I highly recommend um and again links down below <laughs> so silly okay and then uh there was this weird shipping snafu at the at the very end of the year which really pissed me off because it had some of my highest profiting items in there one of them being those jimmy choo shoes um so basically when my carrier picked them up and scanned them in um to be shipped they were automatically being scanned as delivered so that caused an issue if you can imagine um i know i had one sale on poshmark that was basically like oh well it's being returned back to you so um we canceled the sale and if you can imagine that sale 
made it to the person and it got canceled. So basically that person got a free pair of pants. I still got my money because I made a, you know, oh, it's raining. I was wondering what that sound was. Um, I obviously made a stink about it. Like, hey, this is not fair, blah, blah, blah. Um, so I got paid out. The person got pants and their money back. So it is what it is. But luckily I was very open with the buyers and just said, hey, this is what happened. Like they are still they are in the USPS's hands at this point and just please let me know when they get delivered. Um, luckily with the Jimmy Two Shoes, that person, that buyer was like super, super nice about everything. I received positive feedback. They told me they loved the shoes. You know, whenever you sell out like a huge sale like that, I'm like, <gasps> please just go through. I even took like a video of me wrapping it up to make sure you never, can, you can't be too cautious. So anyways, so that was my reseller recap for all of December of 2023. Now let's talk about the year as a whole. Alrighty. So I took some time yesterday going through all of my numbers, totals, averages, all that kind of stuff, kind of give myself some, some notes about everything. So when I'm planning for this year's, um, you know, goals, I have something to go off of. So how do I want to do this? Okay, I'll just tell you the totals of everything. So total sales for all 12 months was $18,686.17. My cost of goods for everything was $6,168.44. And then my total profit for the year was $12,897.16, which is pretty amazing because at the beginning of the year, I want to say maybe around the March, April time, I'd have to like double check my reseller recap video before I, I kind of like said, I want to make a thousand, like my goal is to make a thousand dollars of profit per month. It used to be $750. And then I, I noticed like for a few months in a row, I was like, Hey, I'm making over a thousand dollars, if not more, um, looking at my numbers, I made some like good money at the beginning of the year. So I was like, why not? I'm not, I don't want to sell myself short. Let's up my goal to a thousand dollars per month. Um, so that just kind of took the bar from here to here. So, and I was so, I was so worried because there were a few months that I know I didn't hit that number, but I was like, oh, I, I think I'm there. Um, and I definitely blew it out of the water by, almost a thousand dollars, almost $900, I should say. So that's pretty cool. Like for, for a goal that I kind of set a few months into the year and I was able to achieve it. That's great. And this is definitely the highest profit I've had ever since I've been reselling, I guess. Um, I, I haven't been that dedicated to check before only in the past few years have I actually like checked this much. Um, so that's very cool. It gives me hope of, okay, well, what do I want to make it, you know, $1,100 in profit each month? That would be great. Um, okay. So the total, oh, let's go back. Sorry. My Excel sheet is all over the place. So with all those totals, I averaged about 1500 or I should say $1,557.18. 18 cents per month in total sales. I averaged about $514 of cost of goods per month. And then I averaged $1,074.76 in profit each month. So that is pretty cool. It does feel like I can make that $1,100 goal a lot more attainable. So the total items that I sold all year long was 810 items and that is so cool to think that 810 items have like come and gone from this small little room as you can tell it's a huge mess in here but somehow it still functions um and that averages out to about 67 to 68 items per month that i'm selling that is really cool to think about um my average cost of goods for each month is seven dollars and 79 cents i would really love to get that that cost of goods down because when your cost of goods goes down but you keep the same um sale price then your profit gets bigger so you if you really want to maximize then you try to make your cost of goods as low as possible and you try to make your sale price as high as possible so that profit margin is in there you have a really wide profit margin uh, my average listing price was $32.59 and 
and then my average profit per item was $17.08. So basically, if we broke it down to I'm picking up an item for $7.80, I'm going to sell it for we'll say $33 rounding up and each time I do that I'm getting $17 in return. Not too shabby. Again, I'm okay with that. I would I wish my cost of goods lower? Yes, would I wish my my profit bigger? Of course, but that this is sustainable. If I could just keep rinsing and repeating, that would be great. Um, it's just time and energy for it. And the market changes and the algorithm, algorithms change. So once you think you have something figured out, it always changes. So I try not to get too comfortable with it. But then my average days to sell was 52.6 days. So pretty cool. Again, to think from the time I list something, it is out the door in 53 days pretty cool. So I will say when I write my notes with the months, so May was the time that I kind of started like really being mindful of what I was doing each month. Um, so May was my highest month pretty much overall with everything. Um, my total sales was $2,777.86 and my total profit was $1,718.35. I sold 167 items that month. Um, my cost of goods was kind of in the middle of everything. My profit per item was not that high, um, but what I was doing that month was I ran my $15 sale. So everything that was listed a certain price and below, probably that's what prompted me to do my two for 40 sale because I know I started that the next month. Um, everything that was a certain price, I'm guessing is probably $99 and below was $15. No matter what it was, it was $15 as long as you bundled it. Was it bundled or single items? I know I always typically try to run bundle sales because that encourages, I mean, basically to get the sale, you have to bundle two items and that's two items out of the door. Um, but I can't quite remember. But then the following month, that's when I started my two for 40 sales, which I have run, I ran through every single month afterwards. Um, I did waterfall sales. I did have one month where I did flash $15 sales. Um, I can't quite remember what that sale was, but then in September, I went on vacation for a week. Um, I came back and I did waterfall sales. If you're not familiar with that, it's basically sending out like a 20% sale, then a 30% sale and a 40% dis um, offer, I should say, on your items. And then, yeah, that I, I know that I reduced or I got down to like 65% off on items because I just wanted to regenerate um, my my activity again when I went on vacation, which obviously helped. Um, October, I did my 1550 sale, which was kind of a take on my 1545 sale if you've been around for any, any length of time doing these uh, videos. Um, so again, that was a at a certain price and below those items are $15 and a certain price and above is $50. But I did it a little bit differently because again, normally it's 99 and below is $50, $50 and then 99 and above or 100 and above is 50. Um, so I tweaked it, I think it was $119 and below was 15 and then $120 and above was 50. Um, that just accounted for more potential for me to make profit and for more um, items to be on sale because some of the cost of goods were a little bit higher than the typical 45 that I do. So that always typically does pretty well. Um, let's see, November, I had like a random flash sale where I pretty much said all offers are accepted. As long as you can offer it, I will accept it. <laughs> And I lost money on that. Um, I basically lost like $44 on one of those sales. If I wouldn't have had that, I would have been $45, $44 richer in that month. Um, and the, the month that I did the poorest, if you will, uh, was January of 2023. My total sales was $500 and my profit was $392. Um, I only sold 16 items that month honestly kind of kind of typical but this January stay tuned for January 2024 reseller recap we're doing pretty good we are doing pretty good and it has to do with the sale that I talked about earlier um the liquidation sale so if you are interested because this is going to go up before January is over and I'm extending that 
um, sale throughout January. Check it out. It's pretty good. Um, if I really, really wanted to deep dive into my numbers, I would have checked my highest and lowest sales, which again, you can watch all my videos and, um, you can see what was the highest and lowest, but I do know that my highest profiting sale was that pair of Christian Dior flats, um, back in April. I purchased them for like $250. Um, they were new in box, authentic. Um, they sold on eBay for full price for for $700 plus shipping. So I profited just below $400. So that was my highest profiting sale. And I'm very excited about that. Um, just some general notes that we kind of talked about when we were talking about December is just boosted and promoted sales. So again, I do boosted and promoted on Depop and eBay. I won't do it on Poshmark unless somebody can come at me and be like, it is 100% worth it. The little trial I had it didn't feel worth it to me. Um, so I don't think I'll do it for there, but I do, I'm going to continue to do it on Depop and eBay. Um, again, just running consistent sales. I, I'm always running a sale. I, I feel like, <sighs> I don't know why this sticks out to me, but you know, like JC Penney's back in the day when JC Penney's would have like, this is the, the MSRP, but they're constantly running a sale. Like everything is always 50% off. So it's like their MSRP is $60, but it's always perpetually $30, right? It's kind of how I feel like I am <laughs> recently is that yes, there's a listing price and I still do get people who pay full price or who do accept a 20% offer, but I'm always running sales that are getting people really great deals and I'm still making profit in the end. So that brings me to the, the fact of like, I think I am more of a fast nickel than a slow dime type of gal, you know? I think this is proof for me, which I think I needed that. I needed the proof because I'm always like, no, you know, like I, I want a higher, um, higher, uh, average profit or listing price or blah, 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 blah. But I'm like, the proof was in the pudding right here. I made my goals and I was very close to making $1,100 per month. Um, so maybe I am more of a fast nickel kind of gal. Who knows? Anyways, that is everything that I have for you for this 2023 reseller recap series. Um, like I said, stay tuned for January's. I'm currently filming this on the 23rd. Um, so it'll be about a month from now once I get all of my January numbers. Um, calculated and whatnot but I appreciate you coming along in the journey with me it's it's been very fun looking at all my numbers and kind of like having having them proof like I said that I can do it it is possible I'm a one person one person show doing this and you know almost thirteen thousand dollars excuse me is going into student loans it's going into investments it's going to my future um and I have fun doing it I'm not saying it's fun every single day, but it is, it has brought my passion for clothing and fashion and making money and a community all together in one area. And I get to make money off of that. That's pretty damn cool. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. I truly appreciate it. The best gift you can give any YouTuber is watching their video all the way through, subscribing if you like their content, liking this video, and engaging in the comments down below. How is your reselling year? And if you're not a reseller, can I help you get started with it? If you'd like, uh, do you have any questions about it? Or if you are just here for the support and watching the video, I truly appreciate it. And with that, I'll see you in my next video.